Success is easy to measure if you know those two key ingredients. Are we making the sales and are we getting the profit from the sales that we are making? He knew exactly what they were. He articulated them straight away. Gives me the ultimate confidence. You know what you're doing. I expect everybody to have it so that when we start, we can report on it, okay, and then we can get into solving some problems. Hi, good morning. So welcome to another session of Joseph Valente Business Deep Dive. This is the CEO boardroom. Now, I'm really excited about today's session. We've got some new members around the board table. When I started this just five weeks ago, the whole point of these CEO meetings was to bring my senior team together. It was to identify the players that we had, and it was also to identify the gaps in the senior team that we need to fill. And I like to move fast. So I've already filled two key positions within our senior team and I have two more to go. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome you all to the meeting this morning. Great for um, everyone to get to know each other. What's really important is if we have a solid working relationship across this team. First and foremost, I wanted to set the standards with the existing team that I had, okay, and get the team to understand what, it expect, what um, I expect for those individuals to stay on my team and to be able to operate at the level um, that I need them to operate as this business continues to grow, okay? Um, overcome any challenges together and understand what those challenges are and um, drive urgency throughout the organization, solving problems at a high level so we can progress um, this business quickly. And what's becoming apparent is that there are um, a real need for the department heads to work together in kind of um, three key areas really at this moment in time. And I'm really pleased that actually James and um, Bradley will take up two of those key areas, supporting Malvina um, to be able to get a much, much slicker process from sale made to um, payment taken and then facilitate those ongoing payments. So I wanna discuss that in a little bit more detail. Cool, so Evelina sent out an email with the actions from last week. And what I did last week was go around everybody and I asked for two simple things. What's your input metric? What's your output metric? Success is easy to measure if you know those two key ingredients. And there is a business success measure that I wanted to try and align everybody to, and that is revenue and profitability, okay? So as we went around the room, I said, okay, well, what's your input measure? And everybody came up with their own unique thing that they thought was relevant to them. And it might well have been relevant to the department, okay, but the fact is, those actions taken in that department or um, those input success measures should always tie back to the overall company's success measure, which is input revenue number one, output profit number two, yeah? That's really what we're all aligned to working with. And whether you're driving sales, support, finance, credit, um, bookings, leads, management, operations, they all filter back to the same element that this table needs to be aligned to and that is sales are we making the sales and are we getting the profit from the sales that we are making then from that we can start to break down into each department what are the input output success measures and then that can get driven by the individual kpis so i asked everybody to go away okay and come up with an input and an output metric for their department specifically okay and then to bring me five key kpis that they were going to be able to analyze each week as we went through the process. Input and output for my department is pretty straightforward. First of all, it's how many bookings I'm making um, and then how many have then attended that event. Um, there is an addition to that, which is then I add, I also count, you know, how many bookings for each event actually were on the event in the first place. <clears throat> so really simply, yeah, before yeah. we move on, just to boil it down for everyone to understand, sure. yours is bookings. Yeah and it's bums on seats, Correct. yeah? Bookings, bums on seats, bookings, bums on seats. Now, what we wanna know, and I was saying to James yesterday, is that his job is to understand that you are providing those bums on seats, and then he takes it from there. So it's a great opportunity. I know you guys will be meeting every morning every anyway, yeah. okay, and getting on top of the numbers, but it's a great opportunity for you to understand, you know, if Richard's confident, he's bringing his numbers, he knows exactly where he is, then you know that the revenue, you've got a, a good colleague there that's on the ball, yeah? yeah? And he's got, and you're gonna be able to drive the sales off the back of it, because you need to ensure you've got the bums on seats. Sorry, carry on. The quality of the people that were booking on has been a slight impact in terms of who were marketing. We had a slight change in the marketing strategy. 
So the people that were contacting we feel, felt weren't quite the right demographic that we're looking for. But that's only a slight issue. The next major issue on this is the quality of the booking. Okay, um, One of my biggest mandates when I joined this company and my experience that I'm bringing to the company was the ability to be able to teach people how to sell on the phone and how to, how to add value to, people, you know, to, to the customers to make sure that they're attending the event. Um, and the booking quality and, and the standard of course is still up to the standard I would expect. So to, to address that issue, um, I've basically had one-to-one -one skill assessments with every, every experienced member of the team um, and isolated and put in a structure basically where I've basically written all new training material. So I've got new scripting, I've got new objection handling processes, I've got new sales points and now aligning the whole team so they're all following the same structure. One of the major issues I was coming up against was people kind of doing it their own way. And when people are kind of doing the booking calls their own way, it's very difficult to identify where they're going wrong. So I've now, in the last week or so, realigned how they're all doing it. Uh, the next major part was we have a confirmation process and a nurture process for our, co uh, for our customers. So we book them on, and then the idea is to nurture them to the event so that when they arrive at the event, they're fully still bought into the process and, and, and arrive at the event. Um, what I've done to mitigate that, because at the moment it's a little bit all over the place, we're having different people having to jump in because of the growth of what's happening. So we've now actually put it, fully put somebody in place that role, which is basically, you know, it's a full-time job now to nurture those customers. Okay, so I'm already expecting over the course of the next three events to see a big upturn in that because we've got somebody actually managing the, every single customer that we're booking on as their full-time role. Perfect. Okay, well done. Thank you very much. Um, have you got your KPIs to underpin? Have you got the five clear KPIs? Yes. Okay, my five clear KPIs are booking conversion. So leads coming into the business and the percentage of which I'm turning them from a lead in to being booked onto an event. My second is then the total bookings. That's, that's per day, per week, per month. The third KPI is then the numbers that are being booked onto those events. The total attended. And then lastly, which I've just really put a lot of thought into over the last few days, is then the quality of the customers that are then coming onto that event, which is basically based upon their revenue, their minimum revenue, <coughs> or the total revenue, um, and also as well what type of business that they are. They're my five key people. All right, great stuff. So um, if we, I like to say success leaves clues, and I like to follow blueprints. So to get the standard that I want from these meetings, that was it, yeah? understands his problems, has a simple input-output measure, okay, has already brought the solutions to his problems to tell me that it's getting sorted, and when I asked him for his five KPIs, he knew exactly what they were. There's no thinking about it. He articulated them straight away. Gives me the ultimate confidence that you know what you're doing, yeah? So, thank you very much, yeah? Well done. Okay, that's the standard that by next week, I want everybody that hasn't done the work to be able to get to. So Sadie, I think you were up next. Uh, so input customer experience. Mm -hmm. This is uh, regarding events. So customer experience and then the output is sales. Because obviously they need the most, or want to enjoy and also obtain the most out of an event day and, and gain confidence to be able to have the end product of a sale. So you've got input experience, output experience. So by this time next week, you need to have found those five KPIs. Okay? Mm -hmm. And how you're going to measure that. Yeah? So one would be how do I measure experience? Well, you've got the um, surveys. Yeah? So you want to try and get a quality score out of those. That would be a great way to measure. And then if you understand the sales conversion out the back end and why they bought. I know this week you messaged some people on why they bought, why they didn't bought. So that's a great way to start getting some feedback. And don't worry about that. This is a good way to start getting oh, okay. some feedback. Okay? All right, cool. Great stuff. Shane, I think um, you were next. Yeah, you said you had your stats. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, initially, the first thing would be accuracy and timing. Yes. Is something that has to be worked on. Mm -hmm. It's a very vitally important part of it, mm -hmm. making sure everything is in that should be, yeah. making sure that you know you meet the deadlines, all that kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously part of the challenges that you face as well during the role. The five things that I would say have an impact, direct impact on mm -hmm. that, would initially be from the point of sales orders um, and ultimately through to the invoicing. Um, so input would be accuracy of sales orders, invoicing within a correct time frame. Mm -hmm. 
And then the final one I've got is all sales and costs entered accurately and timely to mm -hmm. give your profit at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah? All right, good stuff. So, um, again, well done for those guys that did pull their information together. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next week is the um, final week that I expect everybody to be prepared. Yeah? And have all of their information. Okay, input, output, three to five KPIs per department. You've got to bring, by next week, I expect everybody to have it so that when we start, we can report on it, okay, and then we can get into solving some problems. What I've had to do over the last four to five weeks is before I can really start jumping in into any problems is, again, I've been working on mindset, okay, and getting everybody into position so they start to see what the priorities are, okay, then once we've got the standard of measure and it's quick and we know what we're measuring, then we can start to fix the problem. So please, 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 next week is the last week that I want everybody to have time to get up to speed here, yeah? We've had long enough now, so let's prepare and organize. Right, we are going to 100 million and to get to 100 million, we need to level up our game. And everybody's being given fair opportunity to do so, okay? You've all sat with me for nearly five weeks now, those that are existing, okay? And you're all pretty clear on what I've been saying and what my expectation. I don't mince my words, do I? Okay, so, you know, when I say what I need to happen, I need it to happen. And so there comes a time if it keeps not happening, either ignoring it or you can't do it. Okay, cool. All right, fantastic. So you've got your input-output measure, Justina. Let's go to you. Um, the first one is like hiring pro process. Yes. So we can get the successful candidates. Yeah. And uh, second one, qualified candidate. So that's going to save my time. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is like telephone interviews. This is the good telephone interviews. We can set up face to face interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, time to hire the person. So we have to be like quick. So we're going to have the good candidates as well. Mm -hmm. And offer the job, which is going to give us a profit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Excellent, cool. So you've got five key KPIs there, yeah? Okay, or measures. And um, what's your input success measure? So um, I was working uh, to make the job descriptions a little, little bit better, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so we can get like better candidates as well mm. who are applying for the jobs. Mm. So I was working on that one the last few days. Okay, all right, cool. So to get great output success, you see that creating great job descriptions is a good um, like input at the one, start. Like for like for videographers, on yeah. the job description I put already like, if they can send me some um, some samples or some profile, you know, with the CV, so I don't have to forward them all the time. I can mm. see that straight away, you know, on the CV. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. gonna save my time as well. All right, fantastic, okay. So, so, so is, the, is well? the input attracting high caliber people? That's really, that's your goal, isn't it? Improving that job description to attract high caliber. Mm -hmm. So your input is high caliber people. Yeah. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, any other? So that will give me like better, better CVs, better candidates, you know? Can I ask, what was it that attracted you? To, what did you see? How did you see this job? Um, it came up on Indeed, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I get a notification of jobs with the word sales in, or cool. director in, or yeah. overlord. Okay. Or CEO. No, okay. <laughs> so it came up because it had the word sales in, and it was UK based. Yeah. And the job description sounds quite aspirational, not the normal job description. Okay. That getting Does it have my name in the job description? No, it had Trade Mastermind, which mm -hmm. I then Googled. Okay, so you went to Google Trade Mastermind next, yeah? Because this is an important customer yeah, journey to walk yeah, in. Yeah, because I wanted yeah. to research the company to see who it was. Yeah. To see I, if it's I, somewhere I, I thought I could join. I, I didn't see Trade Mastermind on the other one. I, I mean, it might have changed because one, what, five, six weeks ago? Yeah. yeah. More about seven weeks ago now, isn't it? I didn't see Trade Mastermind. Sorry. Did you see JV Empires? No. What did you say? It was just. <laughs> 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 I turned up in London. Like it is a point How did you get it? <laughs> Are you in the wrong, the wrong <laughs> business? <laughs> You're on the wrong show. It's a bit of a brief. <laughs> Um, no, so yeah, well, I, I was at a recruitment firm and I, started, I contacted them. So I said, look, I really want this job, this looks amazing. Because uh, I just couldn't find the company. So he contacted the company, gave me the number, and then I rang up and spoke to him. I was just thought, right, I'm going to ring customer care team. He just spoke to the customer care and got straight He was applying on Indeed as well, the job. Yes, but it was prompted uh, by. I will have a look at the job description. Mm, probably might be my answer. So the, the job description was very high profile. Yeah. Similar to jobs I've done, but without that corporate slant. Yeah. Which is what I was looking to get away from. So it, the job description came across, before I even Googled Trade Mastermind, mm. it came across as a 
young energetic company going through growth. Yeah. yeah. Because most of the job descriptions I had were private equity owned, mm. blah blah blah. Yeah. This mm. didn't this sounded very modern. It, it was yeah, almost like, exactly like I imagine working at Google is, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Me and stood up. Yeah. It was that type of job description. And then yeah. I Googled the company, saw it was a very fast paced, exciting business. When you and then where where did I come into the journey of you googling me or searching for me and where did unfinished business come into the journey? First, I googled trade mastermind. Yeah. Found the business. Yeah. You're prominent on the trade mastermind website. Yeah. I, I was on. If it's the, I don't know how many websites we've got, but the yeah. one I was on was very prominent with you. Great picture mm -hmm. of you outside of Bentley. Mm -hmm. Rolls. Very nice picture. Mm -hmm. Looking good in the suit. Um, looked at the business and what it does, mm. and that then I was really interested. Yeah. Then I'd never seen a business with such a high profile CEO. Yeah. So then I Googled you. Yeah. And that's when my daughter subscribed me to your YouTube channel and my yeah. son said you're an absolute baller yeah. and I should go for the job. <laughs> so that was the journey. Yeah. Um, and before I spoke with Justina, I got a good feel for the business and you can't do that normally with a company, but because there's so much of you guys on YouTube, mm. you, you almost feel like you know these people first. Mm. So that's definitely some good ammunition when you come into an interview, you know the mm -hmm. type of culture you're joining. Mm. So you may change your culture and demeanours to fit mm. if you really want the job. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, and you just carry on doing the research, then came for the interview, yeah. Brilliant. And how about you, you guys? Yeah, I'm also finding as well, by the way, with the interviews I'm conducting, mm -hmm. there is the, the, the guys that are coming to the interviews are really sort of well read on us. And obviously I think that's because there is a lot of content online, do you know what I mean? Mm. Which is a massive, I think, massive contributing factor to getting the right people in. Guy came yesterday, literally. He like watched every episode of you from The Apprentice. He even sent me the picture with Joseph. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I can tell you one thing. Yeah, that content. Well. Where, 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 what are you telling them to go and look at, um, Justina? Like, where are you directing the guys? Well, um, well, that guy he know already about the trade market, yeah. you know. Uh, are you telling them to look at the website or my personal social or trade unfinished master business? Trade master website. Cool. Send them to my YouTube and get them to watch the Joseph Valente uh, um, unfinished sure. business and, and yeah and subscribe yeah <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe yeah, yeah, we yeah. may as well pick up the subscribers <laughs> along the way I'll tell you um, one, one thing in the job description I will change if you're recruiting for sales roles is one of the it's specified it must have an MBA in the job description for this this role I've taken and when I first met you I said I climbed mm. to the ranks in this yeah. dollar company without an MBA yeah. So there could be people that are very good at the job, like I think I am, that don't have an MBA, that could be part for applying for roles if, if you're being quite specific yeah, yeah. with qualifications. Well, it would be good if you have a catch up with Justina and go over the new consultant job role anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah just to make sure what Sometimes they say you must have an MBA or relevant experience. Mm -hmm. Do you not think it um, said MBA in the job description? I've got, still got it on my email. Okay. I'll, I'll have a look. I may be wrong. Bradley, what was your walk? Um, it had the company name on Indeed. Yeah. Um, so I googled the company, the company um, looked at them on Credit Place Financials. Mm. I'm sure the company was financially sound. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, 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 yeah. So to make sure the company was financially sound, but it had obviously trade mastermind. So I started to Google that. Um, looked at the website. I was very mm. impressed with the website. Scrolled down. It had various people's pictures and a little bit about themselves. Um, and uh, obviously you're, mm -hmm. you're very prominent on there, um, so read, read it about yourself, and yeah, read about your, your apprentice and mm -hmm. everything else. So they started on YouTube and mm -hmm. looking at that, and a little bit similar, it was my daughter actually turned around and said, I remember watching that, I remember it, I remember you on there. And um, so, um, yeah, that was, that was my journey. But the website Brilliant. I thought was very, very good. Good. Cool. All right, good stuff. I put an intense focus on everything, okay, because I know that um, the detail is what matters. But let's not lose sight of the fact that we have done incredibly well to get to this stage. What I'm saying isn't negative, okay? I just go hard on it because I don't want to fuck up, okay? I want to make sure we win. I'm here to make us win, you win, the whole business win, and I want to keep scaling. So I place a lot of intensity into my approach. That doesn't mean I'm negative about the approach. It's just intense, yeah? comes from passion. And it comes from making sure that I want to grow and, you know, you guys to become successful still um, as well or to continue to be successful. So we have a fantastic um, business up until this point. OK, and it's going to get better. We've done this far to get to a million quid. OK, and we are still here. So with all of these suggestions locked in, it can only get better from this point. Yeah, we've just got to ensure now that every general 
is able to keep on top of their department. And if they hit their KPIs, then we have no problems. And remember, I used this analogy last week, yeah? Copilot has KPIs. If the copilot's looking at his KPIs and his KPIs are telling him that there's a problem, then we've got a problem. We are all currently in the air right now, flying at 40,000 feet. And we all agreed that nobody would get in a car, at the plane, if the pilot couldn't see his dials, yeah? So you're gonna have your dials, you've got your dials. If the dials are screaming at you, saying the engine temperature's high or the fuel is low, yeah, then let somebody know, because we need to do something about it.